Hey guys, welcome back. Thanks for joining me in my shop. This is uh, another video in the Handle Material Showdown series. And if you guys haven't followed along on these videos yet, the purpose of the Handle Material Showdown series, every week I introduce a new style of handle material or a new type of material and I make a knife out of it. Through the process of me making a knife out of this, I'm going to teach things. I'm going to teach you what grit sandpaper to use, the qualities of the material, you know, whether or not you should sand at a high rate of speed or a low rate of speed, whether the material burns, um, what it smells like, how easy it is to work, how fast it is to remove the material, and then of course I'm going to teach you how to finish it. Uh, you know, different finishing techniques for each different handle material because there's a wide variety of different techniques to finish different materials. And that's kind of the gist of this entire playlist, guys. I'm going to have hundreds of different materials I'm going to throw at you. Tonight, I'm introducing a piece of maple burl, and it's a dyed and stabilized maple burl. And it's not only dyed once, it's not dyed twice, but this is a triple dyed piece of maple burl, which gave it some really striking figure. And I'm gonna bring you in close and describe that to you. Okay guys, here we go. This is stabilized maple burl wood. These are the eyes of the burl. I would think that this piece of wood was near the actual surface of the wood in the burl cap. And they triple dyed it. So we have uh, one color here in the uh, in, deep into the eyes. They probably dyed that first. And then they did a, a, a medium dye with the teal and then a quick dye with the purple. That's the, the method they would have done to get this dye pattern. Super cool. This block we called Starry Night. You can probably guess why. It looks amazing. What an awesome block. Now, obviously, when you look at this, this is where most of your figure is on the end grain. So, you know, this part of the knife right here, we'll get this purple color, but it's kind of a blurred figure. So this will be the top of the knife, side of the knife, bottom of the knife. Or maybe we'll do that top and this the side and this the bottom. I don't know. I haven't figured that out yet. Starry night, guys. Here we go. So this week I have a twist for you, though. Not only am I going to do a handle material showdown, and I'm going to teach you how I use this uh, starry night block right here. I have decided to make a knife for myself. In uh, eight years, I have not kept a knife, but the time has come for me to keep a knife. And it's kind of funny how I landed on this decision to keep this knife. I actually made this sand my blade right here. I'll bring you in and show you pictures of it. I made this about six months ago. This was my third attempt at making sand my by hand where I welded three pieces of steel together in an airtight box and hand forged this. This has been sitting in a drawer ever since. I took the knife to 80% completion and I started to see a small area right here and an area on the spine and an area right here on this side in the same spot all the way around where I had some forge welding issues. So I, I would not ever send this knife out to public for any reason. But, do I think it'll make a great knife? Absolutely. These little delaminations here will have no effect on my core, on the, the core material, my actual cutting edge material. So I've decided this is the perfect knife for me. Why not? Let's go ahead and finish it up and uh, I'll have a pretty neat knife to carry around when I go hunting and when I camp with my family and different things like that. All right, guys, here we go. Safety glasses, always. Got my guard here. Let's just check for fitment. Should be pretty darn good. Man, they normally don't go on that good. Holy moly. Holy moly, that's nice. First go. This is how I lay out my handle material. Something that you should do every time that you pick up a piece of material. When I look at this, if I were to just take my knife, like this, 
and take my block, how it was square, and put it up there and lay this over here, you'll notice that um, I would not have been able to fit my handle in that block. See how the bottom of the handle comes out? So what I needed to do is I needed to see how can I make this handle fit on this block? Well, you know, if I position the, the block just right, it will fit, the whole handle will fit within the block. But I need to alter this front edge. So what I did was, I just took this piece right here. Here's the block, natural, right there. And what I realized is I needed to cut off a little bit of that block to get this angle right here so that I can get the entire handle out of my block. So I needed to cut that small piece out so that I could get the handle to fit in this block. If I would have left it square, you'll notice there's no way that I could put that up, up there and get that handle shape to fit within the block. But when I cut that little sliver off, now the handle fits inside of that block. Super cool, huh? So all I did was just run it over to the bandsaw and I cut this little wedge out. Now, the way that I actually took that measurement though, is I put the block up here and then I took this um, protractor that I could see through that's got lines on here. And what I did was I took this line and I looked through it to line it up with my guard material right there. And then once it was in line with my guard material, I drew a line on my block. So I looked through and lined this line up with that guard right there. I lined that up with the guard visually so I could see it through there so I had the right angle. And then I just drew a line on the block, walked over to my bandsaw and cut it off. Now I'll go over to my, my 2x72 and I'll clean this up. You could clean this up on a surface plate and sandpaper like this, dragging it across. You could clean this up, um, it, you know, you could just put it in your vise and clean that up with the file if that's all you had. I have a 2x72, so I'm going to use it. The absolute best thing that you could use on this would be a disc sander. A disc sander with a work surface would keep this absolutely perfectly flat and at 90 degrees. Um, we'll make do with the 2x72. We've got some tricks over there on that machine that get this pretty close to being perfect, and then I just drag it across uh, the, on my surface plate a couple times to dial it in. So we just ground this square. And one thing I like to do is check this just like that to make sure it's perfectly smooth and square all the way across. Now see, to my eye, it looks like this side is high. But I'll tell you what, when I put this on there, it's not at all. It's absolutely perfect. That's why I use the square. Off of a square side that I know is absolutely perfectly flat, I could test for square. Now what you guys don't see is I normally hold this up and look at it with light. If I have a light on this side over here and I look at it from down below, I look for light to, to come through in any gaps. And that gives me a perfect indicator of whether or not this is square. But that looks really good all the way out to, all the way out to the edge. So right there good it's perfect all right so we'll move on to the next step where we're going to lay the tang of the knife right on there and trace out the tang so we can hollow out a spot for the tang to fit inside this is another spot where i could have easily messed up if i would have just taken this and lined my material up with the top of the block i wouldn't have got the rake on the handle right when i look at the the layout here this actually will be up here and then that way I can get the the curve of the handle out of the back of the block so that that's why sometimes it is really good to have a template to work off of so that when you look at it you can see exactly what you're doing give myself a nice area that I'm gonna hollow out there we'll come in we'll mark a center line right here and then mark the top and bottom of the tang and drill this out 
Once again, guys, if you want to see this whole process in depth with lots of description, I have in-depth handle making videos. This is more video about how this material is to work. And uh, I'll tell you right now, from grinding it, this is a very pleasant smelling wood. There's nothing foul. There's no, no uh, bad odors or anything like that. It is um, highly purple because of this purple dye. So it definitely has covered everything in purple just from this small little tiny section that I cleaned up on the 2x72. So I'll, I'll gamble to say right now, when I go to shape this handle, my entire shop is going to be purple. I'll probably look like a Smurf by the time I'm done, which will be quite humorous. And I'll show you guys video of it. Purple. Move the table back. I went ahead and drilled two parallel holes right here. I don't want to drill a third hole because at this angle, well, let me show you what would happen. I'll actually show you. Let me move it over to where that would be, and then I'll move the, this forward. So I'll show you the path of the drill bit here. So if I would have drilled that, same depth, see how it would have poked out the side of the bottom of my hole? Well, when I go to shape the handle, I could get into the cavity there where the drill bit is, and I certainly don't want that. I'm anticipating this to be the only area where there's a drill bit. So I've set my depth stop so that the drill bit stops right there. I've drilled one hole here and one hole here, so that means my hole stopped right about here. But this hole, if I would have just gone over and drilled this hole, um, I would have gone outside of my pocket. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to loosen this up. Bring this drill bit down. What I'll do is I'll align this side with the side of the drill bit, just like that, right there. And that's good. Now when I drill, it's going to drill right down this side line, right there. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so we've gone ahead and done the glue up. And now I've got the uh, kind of handle kind of laid out. I don't like this angle right here. So, you know, when I clean this up, I will bring this right through the guard into the handle and I'll make sure that this transition is nice and fluid through here. And then uh, it'll kind of curve down and get this handle shape that I want in here. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take it over to the grinder and we're gonna start hogging off all this extra material. I thought of something fairly important to talk about. Okay, look at this block of wood. When you look at it, you'll notice that you see the end grain and you see the burl eyes on the side, but you don't see it on the top. 
and you do see it on this side. So that tells you that uh, you're going to see the grain from the side profile. If I were to take this handle and make it really round, then this part would be smeared on this round portion where this is what we really want to see. So in order to showcase this particular handle wood, I want the side of the knife to remain somewhat flat so that you see this. If I round this off really round, it's going to exaggerate this grain that you see on the top farther over the radius. Go ahead and give myself some grind lines here. That's going to give me some lines to grind to. Knock those off first, and then we can start shaping this handle. I know that these videos have a lot of shots of just me and the grinder, but if you're really looking at knife making, you're going to spend a lot of time with this machine here. This is the knife. I have not finished the handle material yet, but I wanted to, this is kind of like a two for one video for you. Yes, this video was about this particular handle material. I'm gonna tell you a lot about that. But also, I wanted to bring attention to this guard. I used copper. I used copper for a reason, actually. This handle material is very vibrant and it's purple and blue and teal, it's got all these wild colors, that's why I use the copper. I'm going to do a forced patina on the copper. It's actually really cool and I'm going to show you how to do that. You use miracle Grow. There's the one part miracle Grow. Miracle Grow. I'm going to go to three parts of water. One, two, What you want to do is you want to continually bathe this with the miracle Grow solution. So you just come out, take some dabs here, and bathe it down, get it real nice and as it dries, come out, give it another another bath of the miracle Grow solution and it will begin to start forming oxides. Hey guys, this is the next morning. Surface oxides are starting to build up here, which is a good sign. So I'm just going to continue to bathe it right here. I don't know exactly how long I'm going to let this go, but you know, I'm going to take it until I get the desired look that I'm going for here. I really like how it looks on this textured finish. I'm thinking I might uh, change my game plan here and I might texture the sides and then do this again. In fact, I'm going to do that. Update. 
I went ahead and added a hammered finish to the sides of the guard and all the way around because I think it's going to hold this patina better. Here we go. Look at that nastiness. That's a lesson learned right there. I can refinish the blade. Basically when I built this sheath, I had a piece of debris in there and inserted the knife and it scraped it on both sides. Oh, what a nasty lesson to learn. That's a really gorgeous blade, guys. Came out super cool. But this is a handle material video anyway. Um, I did want to show you this guard. You know, I forced a patina on it to get that blue color in the guard. Super cool. Came out all over the guard. It's really neat. You know, get that rustic feel. This is the triple dyed maple burl, stabilized. Incredibly cool wood. Really easy to work. Very enjoyable handle material. Smelled good. It's sanded easily. It's shaped easily. It polishes beautifully. It's solid. Um, this would probably rank right up there at 9 or 10 on the handle material rating. I loved this material. Uh, you know, of course you don't have to get the purple and blue. This can be multiple different colors. It can come in just a natural color even. Obviously it wouldn't be dyed or double dyed or triple dyed at that point, but you get the gist. Stabilized maple burl. Awesome wood. Really cool figure. Check it out. This is my knife. You know, I'm probably not even going to be fussed about this right here because I plan on beating this knife up. I really do. I'm going to run this knife through the paces. You know, I've got a problem here. I've got a problem there. I've got a problem right here. Basically, I'll tell you exactly what happened. When I was forging this and uh, this billet was twice as long, this entire side of the billet from here on was fine. Right here I had the problem, so I must not have had this hot enough when a forge welded it. And, uh, and this one cladding layer wanted to peel off. However, this core layer, the 1095, it's perfectly fine. And boy is this thing hair popping sharp. You can probably see right here, I mean, hair popping sharp. Pops the hairs right off. And that's cool. As a knife should be. There you go. Really good handle. It's got a lot of handle. Um, I love the rake on this. You know, the handle sweeps right into a curve of the blade. Really neat. Very good design. This is larger than a normal knife that I would carry, personally. But worked out really cool. I did a kind of a hybrid, hybrid sheath where I mixed two different talents to make the sheath. Kind of, kind of, whoops, kind of different. I almost dropped it. In, I almost dropped it on camera. <laughs> it's one thing to drop it when I'm not on camera. I can hide that, but when it's on camera, it's pretty hard to hide. And I also went natural on this, and to get this color, I uh, I wet the leather and then I dried it with the heat gun slowly. Oop, I got a couple little pieces of leather I need to clean up there. But, you know, I wanted this to look kind of weathered and beat up, and, well, obviously, it looks beat up. <laughs> Alright guys, let me know what you think of that triple dyed maple burl. Triple dyed maple burl.